blessed afternoon to everyone and welcome to Baptist Bible Church. Welcome to our afternoon service. May I request everyone to please stand as we begin. We're going to sing the song, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Let's sing all together on the first verse. Ready, sing. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us. For our use thy foes prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us, Thine we are. We are Thine, do Thou befriend us, Be the garden of our way. Keep Thy flock from sin, defend us, Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Thou hast promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and part to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. A peace called Brother Mark goes also to lead us in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray and thank you, Lord, for this Sunday that we can gather again this afternoon, Lord, to have our worship service. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that is here. Um, as we worship you together this evening, Father, we pray, Lord, that we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts, that there be no hindrance as we worship you this afternoon, Father. Again, Father, for we pray, O God, that you will put words in the mouth of our speaker this evening, and help us, Lord, to be able to apply in our lives, and after that we bless every part of our worship this afternoon, for the things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated as we listen to the choir.
Let us all stand as we continue our worship through our singing. In heaven, there would be a great reunion, a reunion of everyone who has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And hindi lang ito mga Pilipino. Ito ay manggagaling sa iba't ibang nasyon dahil sila ay mga tao rin na iligtas ng Diyos. And together, we are going to sing praises to our Savior. This song kind of gives that uh, message. So let us, please join me as we sing this song, There is a Higher Throne. All together on the first verse, ready, sing. There is a higher throne than all this world has known. We're faithful ones from every time. Will one day come before the sun will stand? Made faultless through the Lamb, believing hearts find promised grace. Salvation comes, hear heaven's voices sing, their thunderous anthem rings through emerald courts and sapphire skies. Their praises rise, all glory, wisdom, power, strength, thanks, and honor are to God our King who reigns on high forevermore. And there we'll find our throne will honor him in perfect song where we belong he'll wipe each tear stained eye as thirst and hunger die the lamb becomes our shepherd king we'll reign with him Heaven's voices sing, their thunderous anthem rings through emerald courts and sapphire skies. Their praises rise, all glory, wisdom, power, strength, thanks, and honor are to God. King who reigns on high forevermore. You may be seated. Well, thank you, Brother Evelyn, for the great songs. Good afternoon, Happy New Year again, and welcome to our evening service for the year 2021. Indeed, it's been a great day. We have received God's showers of blessings this morning and until now, uh, literally. But uh, indeed, we praise the Lord for another year that He has given us that we can live for Him, serve Him, and win more souls for Him. This is also an opportunity for us as believers to be able to serve the Lord in spite of all the things that's happening around the world. Okay, uh, just to remind you of some things, just continue to pray for our dear pastor. We're glad every time our pastor is here. It's been an encouragement to see him every Sunday morning, uh, an encouragement to us to continue in our faith and growth in the Lord. Also to pray for our uh, pastors and uh, missionaries that we are supporting, okay, that the Lord will continue to direct them, uh, especially those who are on deport deportation, uh, what the plans the Lord planned, uh, had, had for them for this year. And then also for Brother Mike, continue to strengthen him as he undergoes uh, chemotherapy. Also, um, uh, if you need, if you are looking for an areas for, of uh, service for the Lord to, to be able to serve Him, uh, we have uh, in, uh, opened uh, some uh, prov uh, ministries for you to join. Children's ministry. Uh, you can contact Bro Sister Grace or Brother Leon for the music ministry. Also, you can contact Brother Sister Joy and Brother Irvin. And then lots of opportunities 
that we can be able to serve the Lord. Or even if you like to open up a, a virtual Bible study, that will be fine so that you can be able to witness to your office mate, to your neighbors, to your relatives. Okay? There's lots of opportunities for us that the Lord will, uh, has given us to be able to serve Him. Also, uh, this coming Sunday will be our candlelight service. It will be done in the morning. So I would like to invite you to be here this coming Sunday, January 10, as we have our candlelight service. Just to remind us that we are the light of the world and let our, shines, uh, let our light shine before men. Also, uh, two weeks from now, we'll be celebrating our anniversary, uh, 72 years of God's faithfulness to Baptist Bible Church. We praise the Lord for the people that God used uh, that started this church and our pastor who has been faithful uh, until now. He's been the head of the, uh, been leading this church, a shepherd, under shepherd of this church. So we praise the Lord for that. Uh, on the ministries that God has uh, opened for Baptist Bible Church and we've been a blessing to them. So let's uh, uh, pray for our anniversary. We can invite our friends to be here. We are allowed to have 30% or more than 200 of our capacity in our uh, auditorium. Or if they cannot come, they can listen to us on our live streaming. And uh, also let us call our friends, our, our former members who are living abroad. So they can watch our anniversary on that day okay so do, please do pray for our anniversary okay so that takes care of all announcements uh just anything anyone visiting with us for the very first time meron po ba okay so i'm glad to see all of you happy new year again so let's sing our welcome song are you happy to be in the house of god this afternoon say amen Amen. So let's encourage one another by waving at each other as we sing the welcome song. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. Hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. How many of you remember the song, God's Wonderful People? Are you God's wonderful people? <laughs> Amen. So let us sing the song, God's Wonderful People. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with you. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with you. God's wonderful Jesus is so real to me, I see Him through eyes of faith. I have felt His presence near in the moments of each day, yet so many do not know. Of the love he longs to give. Oh, how will they come to see Christ and believe? Let them see Christ in me. Let them see Christ in me. Let me be His eyes of compassion, 
and his ears to hear their need. Let them see Christ in me. Let them see Christ in me. Let me be his heart of boundless love. Let them see Christ in me. People struggle all alone in the darkness of this world. Some imprisoned by their greed, some have given up all hope. Let the world be flesh again. In my life and in my deeds That people may see Jesus and believe Let them see Christ in me Let them see Christ in me let me be His eyes of compassion and His ears to hear their need. Let them see Christ in me. Let them see Christ in me. Let me be His heart of bond love let them see Christ in me oh may I let this light so shine that others soon will find his grace his peace his strength his joy, let them see Christ in me, let them see Christ in me, let me be His eyes of compassion and His ears to hear their need. Let them see Christ in me. Let them see Christ in me. Let me be His heart of boundless love. Let them see Christ. Let them see Christ. Let them see Jesus Christ in me. Thank you, Brother Jay. And now it's time to worship the Lord through our giving. Let's all please stand. And as I call the ushers to come, as we receive our evening tithes and offerings. We are now on our fifth week for our uh, paid promise giving. Our goal is 70000 per week so that we can be able to reach, uh, to reach the world with the gospel. Okay. So, let me call the uh, Brother Gaso uh, Maar. Francis, sorry for that. Let's pray. Grace your Heavenly Father, Lord. Salamat sa hapong ito, Lord, na binigay niyo po sa amin, Lord. And uh, I ask and pray, Lord, that you bless both the gift and the giver, Lord. 
uh, especially the Tithes Lord and the Offerings Lord, as well as the Faith Promise Lord, that, they mis that this may be used for the furtherance of your Gospel, Lord. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Good evening uh, to everyone who's here and to everyone who's watching our services. And uh, let's continue to pray for Pastor Boyd as he gains strength. And we are very much happy that for three consecutive Sundays, he has been here with us. And let's pray for even more progress in his health and in his strength. And we see the Lord that the Lord is answering our prayer. So let's continue to pray also for Pastor Maitanyala that he would be able to uh, gain complete recovery from his uh, cancer. And um, we see also that the Lord is providing for their needs and also that the Lord is uh, working in their lives. So please have them in our prayers. And if you know anyone that who is in need of prayer, he, she, who are in need of prayer, would you please uh, just uh, communicate with our uh, church staff, uh, send, send that to our email addresses so that we would be able to pray for them. And we pray for those uh, requests that are, that are given to us. So please uh, don't hesitate to uh, send any prayer request that you would like to have. In continuing with the topic of facing 2021 courageously, uh, I would like to begin this with a series of questions. Have you ever faced difficulties, dangers, problem, problems, challenges that are way beyond your capacity to deal with? Perhaps you don't have the enough strength to deal with that. You do not have the ability to be able to tackle those and perhaps your your innate resources physical resources would really touch you so much now if you are faced with those situations what would you do? worry? fret? give up? These are the best opportunities for us to put to practice what we believe. Those problems are there to remind us that at times that we must face this thing, that these times are given to us so that we would be able to see our own inadequacy and to focus on the all-sufficiency of God. These are the opportunities that God has put in our path so that we would come to see ourselves as unable and inadequate within ourselves only to face this situation so that we would be able to focus on the all-sufficiency of God. The psalmist reminds us here, we don't know who the psalmist is in the psalm that we are going to read, he's here to remind us that because the Lord is our helper, we must lift up our eyes to him. Shall we all get our Bibles and Shall we stand as we read Psalms 121? Psalms 121, and let's read this and follow me with your eyes as I read this uh, aloud. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made the, he the heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, and nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve, preserve thee from all evil. He shall, keep, he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy 
going out and they coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to gather again. And at the times, Lord, that we have not been able to gather and our hearts have been longing for the fellowship that we that we have. And thank you again, once again for allowing us for this opportunity to worship you uh, with the brethren who confess the same faith. Lord, I pray that each one of us, every member of Baptist Bible Church, as they were allowed and given opportunity, that we would cherish such opportunities as this. So that, Lord, uh, we would be able to exhort you in a way that is fitting to your name. Help us, O Lord, and we confess, Lord, our own inadequacy for the problems that we might face this coming year. We do not know what is in store for us, but we know, O Lord, that you are all sufficient and even more to help us deal with the situation that we are, that are before us. And this we ask and pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may please take your seat. So this is the Psalm 121. As if you read the heading of this Psalm, this is what you would find. A song of degrees, with, or as, which means a song of ascents. Uh, there is no indicated author as to who wrote this. But this is one of the 15 Psalms that are sung by the pilgrims as they would go to Jerusalem to appear before God on the time that he would appear for worship. Remember the times that God has required each Israelite, each male Israelite, that they are to appear before God. Shall we open our Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16? Uh, this is a by way of review of the things that we have uh, learned last Sunday. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of the unleavened bread, in the feast of weeks or the feast of the Pentecost, under the feast of the tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. So these are the times that by which every male of, of Israelite male will uh, are required to go to Jerusalem to worship. Some of them would be coming from different tribes. Some of them would be coming from different um, countries. And they would go to make their way. They would come and make their way to Jerusalem so that they would be able to worship God on those special days. And as they um, as they make their pilgrimage, they would be singing this song to remind them that they are also pilgrims, not only uh, on their way to Jerusalem, but they are pilgrims here on earth on the way to heaven. So, uh, from Psalms 120 to Psalms 124, are this, these are the songs that are sung on those occasions. Um, this psalm is also known as the traveler psalm. Some believe that this was written during the time of the Assyrian uh, siege on Judah when Sennacherib was leading the invasion. God delivered the kingdom of Judah from the Assyrian king and Hezekiah composed this psalm to express his confidence on God. One thing we know about this psalm is that this is relevant today as it was relevant then to the pilgrims who travel uh, to Jerusalem. The first two verses are here to remind us that the Lord is our helper. That is the general tone of the of the of the whole psalm. And with this big idea that because the Lord is our helper, we must lift up our eyes unto him. So there are three main things that I would like to discuss with you today about the Lord as to who he is to us. The first is this, that the Lord is our helper. That would be the general statement. A general statement in this passage and the way by which he becomes a helper to us would be, but would be even more defined by the um, second thoughts that I will share with you in a while. So, this is not a promise. Now, this psalm is not a promise that there will be no difficulty that we will ever face. 
Ba't kailangan pa natin ng helper kung walang difficulty tayong dadaanan? So, please think of, uh, of this thought that difficulties are part of our Christian journey. Part of our Christian experience. Uh, so, this is a declaration of what, that whatever circumstances that may come in our, in our way, we have an ever-present helper. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from, <coughs> me, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made the heaven, heavens and the earth. He is our ever-present helper. So, you will notice here that as the pilgrims make their way to Jerusalem, as they traverse to Jerusalem, uh, they would be exposed to so many dangers along the way. The robbers would lay in wait for them to harass them and to take their possessions. Wild animals may attack them and devour them. This is why they travel in companies for protection. Walang mga ngahas dito na mag-travel na mag-isa lamang siya dahil sa mga panganib na nakaabang sa kanya. Um, nakaabang sa kanya. So, uh, the perils they encounter, they encounter along their way and the circumstances that they may have that ha that they may have in their lives cause them to pray i will lift up my eyes mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord which made the heaven and the earth now them help does not come from the mountains of course now this is, there is an interpretational issue uh, in this passage because during those times some some pagan worshiper worship in the mountains doon sila nag-worship thinking na doon ang nanggagaling ang tulong na hinahanap nila no the help comes from the lord who is beyond the mountains he is the one who has made in fact the mountains so even as they are on their way to jerusalem they have not yet reached that uh the city they are already making an affirmation of faith that the Lord is our helper. So, one truth that we can learn from this is that the place of prayer, the place by which we could call on God, is not only in Jerusalem or is not only in, uh, in this church, that even as they journey back then, they can make their prayer, they can sing the song in worship and in supplication to Him. That's why He is our ever-present helper. Sa yung ating tulong na kahit saan na pwede natin siyang tawagan. My help cometh from, from, from the Lord. So, what else? This kind of helper is an, an all-powerful helper. Let's read again. My help cometh from the Lord. This is the name, the covenant name of Jehovah. This is yung redemptive, redemptive name ng Panginoon. Yahweh, Jehovah, Lord. In, in your Bible, there, these are all capitalized to indicate that this is taken from Yahweh, the covenant name of God. The redemptive name of God. Yung kanyang pangalan na siya ang nagtutubos. Pero He is defined here as the one who made the heaven and the earth. If you have a helper who is all-powerful, powerful enough to make the heaven and the earth, how much more can he help you in whatever problems you are dealing with? There is nothing so small, there is nothing so big in the sight of, sight of God that we cannot bring it to him in prayer. So, there is no other source of help <clears throat> that we can adequately and thoroughly <clears throat> bring, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, bring deliverance to us. The way that the Lord, that God, <clears throat> excuse me, protected and provided for us during the difficult times, during the pandemic. You remember those difficult times? 
Uh, for us, we were wondering if we would be able to buy those that we need. Nag-agawan kasi ng mga, ano, ng mga supplies eh. Brother Al Jade would, <laughs> uh, would go to the market and I would, some, dalawang pas ang binigay sa amin dito. And I could still remember him being, uh, have, have to wait for a long line of, of uh, just to purchase those. I could still remember that I have to, to stay in SM four hours just to buy the things that we need. Kasi ang haba ng pila, nakahira pa yun. How many of you have experienced those? <laughs> and we are wondering if the prices would, uh, would go up way beyond our capacity to buy. And we thank the Lord na iningatan niya kami, nag-provide siya ng pangangailangan. In fact, we were just surprised that somebody would, <clears throat> would send us uh, some items of the things that we need during those difficult times. May mag-abot dito ng pagkain, luto na minsan mga mga ano, mga vegetables and meat, uh, and meat na lulutuin and we, hindi kami po nagkulang. And probably you could have the same uh, testimonies on how the Lord had provided for you. We were protected and one of our worries during this time is what if one of us got sick? We do not yet understand the nature of the disease and we are very much worried of, of the situation and we talk of preparing for the eventualities that one of us may get sick and how do we uh, deal with that situation. So the way that God protected and provided for us during those difficult times is the evidence that He is a helper that who is worthy of our wholehearted trust. Siya ang ating saklolo na pwede siyang tumulong sa anumang sitwasyon sa, sa buhay natin. <clears throat> so, not only that the Lord is our helper, but in the next verse, the Lord is our keeper. Six times the word keep in um, Thank you, Brother Anthony. You're a good man. This water is brought to you by Aquaserve. <coughs> so the next... <coughs> <laughs> Don't worry, hindi lang ako nagkakaganyan na kumakain at umiinom na my face shield. <clears throat> so, the Lord is our keeper. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He will not, uh, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. He that keepeth Israel, behold, so, the word behold, whenever you see that word behold, it, it is therefore emphasis. To, to emphasize the idea that he has just said earlier, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shield, a, a shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Not only that the Lord is our helper, but he is also our keeper. In our God, in our God. In this passage, the psalmist illustrated uh, the watchful eyes of God that He will not allow our feet to slip or to slide or to slip or to be moved. He causes us to stand for the Lord no matter how difficult circum that the circumstances may be. When King Hezekiah was facing the invasion of the armies of King Sennacherib, the king of uh, the, who is king of who is the king of Assyria, the odds against Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the the odds against Hezekiah were was against him were great. Rabshake, one of the princes of Assyria, taunted Hezekiah, saying, "Even if I give you two hundred two thousand horses, would you have enough men to ride on them?" Inaalas ka pa siya. Sabi ka, kaunti naman ang mga sundalo ninyo. Bigyan ko, pagbigyan ko kayo dyan ng 2,000 na mga horses, may mga 
enough men baba kayo dyan na sasakay doon? So, he was speaking at, at the walls for all the people to hear. So, yun ang ginagamit niyang psychological warfare. The, Asari, the Assyrians were known for their extreme cruelty and for their viciousness. Isang ginagawa po nila, binabalatan po nila yung tao ng buhay. They would skin the people alive, play their skin, and uh, put in the things that would, that would bring uh, great uh, pain, that would aggravate pain to them, while slowly killing them, and then he would cut off their head. He would cut off their heads from the, he would cut off the heads of the prominent leaders and put them as a pyramid or as a pile at the gate of the at the gates of the city. This is this is how cruel they were. So can you just imagine how terrorized the soldiers of King Hezekiah and also the people who were living in Jerusalem? So King Hezekiah had enough prison to cause his feet to slip or to slide. But God sent a promise to Prophet Isaiah that no arrow will ever be shot by the enemy during his invasion. On the evening, the angel of the Lord killed 185 soldiers of King Sennacherib. He went back to Nineveh in disgrace only to be killed by his two sons. Pinatay siya ng kanyang sariling anak. So, can you just imagine the relief that uh, King Hezekiah had and probably in this occasion, this is the time that he was able to, to compose this so that he, those people who would um, know, know it, who would read it, would remember the time of this great victory. Now the same, prom, the same promise of God's keeping power is available to us. This is not only for King Hezekiah. David Jusek, one of the Bible commentators uh, illustrates this on how we would apply it in our context today. He says, the standing of the believer, now the question is how can we apply this in our setting today? The standing of the believer in Jesus is impressive. He calls us to stand in grace. Shall we all turn our Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 1, although this is already a sermon in itself, but we will just mention it. Um, Therefore, having, having uh, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We also stand in the gospel. First um, Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. This is what the word of God, God says. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, we, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. We stand on the gospel truth. We also stand in courage and in strength. Open your Bible to the book of First Corinthians, chapter chapter sixteen, chapter chapter sixteen. The next chapter, verse thirteen. Uh, chapter sixteen, verse thirteen. This is what the Word of God says. What ye? Stand fast in the faith, treat you like men and be strong, or behave like men, or man up and be strong. And there are many, one, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. Um, he causes us to stand, um, to stand in faith. 24. And not only for we have dominion over your faith. But are helpers of your joy, for by faith we stand. We stand fast also in Christian liberty. The Bible says in Galatians, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We also stand in Christian unity. Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. Philippians chapter 1 verse 27, this is what the word of God says. Uh, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit and in one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And we stand also in, uh, in the Lord. Chapter 4, verse 1 of 
Philippians, Moreover, brethren, verse 1 of chapter 4, Moreover, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for, and my crown, so I stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. So the goal is that we will be able to, per to stand perfect and complete in the will of God. That is Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Uh, let's read that. Colossians chapter 4, um, verse 12. This is how we apply it in our set setting today. A professor who is one of you, a servant of God, saluted you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in the will of God. So, the promise that God will keep us in this passage is repeated six times in this psalm. Now, if it, was, if it is repeated twice, it means that it is important that God is our keeper. The word picture here is used of a watchman on the towers who guards over the city to protect them from the invasion. So, if you have watched a film like this in the early warfare, they would have, they would have watchers on the towers to watch over for the enemy. Uh, to, so that they would be warned against the invasion. So, they would have guards on rotation. To make sure that nobody sleeps on their job. Here, the Lord is our soul watchman. Who guards over us, yang tagabantay sa atin. At hindi niya nang kakailangan ng kapalit. Because he never slumbers. Now take note of the use of the word. He that keep it, they will not slumber. So this is a promise personally. Now this are, there is also a promise corporately. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall na, neither slumber nor sleep. So, this is also a promise to us personally and also to us corporately as a church. Hindi po natutulog ang Diyos. No matter what these situations you might be facing, God is never, um, God is never asleep. The constant watch of our Lord must cause us to stop fretting and start trusting in God. This is the evidence of His loving care for us. He will be our shield or shade at our right hand to protect us from evil. The imagery is used of a shade to protect us from to protect us from the scorching heat of the sun. The reference to the moon smiting at at the night refers to the belief that the pagan hold during those times that that the moon sometimes in its fullness would in the, during the full moon would have some evil influence on on people. But here God is our protector uh, from any harm, even though He is mentioning here that wakay matakot superstition lang yan, di ba? Kahit ngayon, kaya, sasabihin natin. Kaya naman nagkakaganyan kasi kabidugan ng buwan. You remember? So, that is idea actually. So, ano yan? Nagiging werewolf or what? So, uh, so, if the Lord is our watcher, we do not need to be afraid of anything. This assurance must cause us to trust in God alone and not be afraid of anything because God is our faithful keeper. Remember, six times, binanggit dito that the Lord is our keeper. So what else? Not only that the Lord is our helper, that the Lord is our uh, keeper, but the Lord is also our preserver. Let's read the, the last two verses. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. And even forevermore. So, the moment that we have trusted Jesus Christ as our Savior, He took away all the punishment that we deserve. If you are a Christian, if you have put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord has taken away all the punishment that we deserve. We have been adopted into God's family and we stand secure in Him. The greatest enemy that we have, Satan, has been defeated at the cross. So, tandaan po niya, na lahat ng mga promises na ito can only be fulfilled in view of the gospel. Uh, so the author, the author of Hebrews says, in Hebrews chapter chapter 2 verse 14 and 15, For as must then, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death 
he might destroy him that had the power of death, and that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were in their lifetime subject to bandage. So, at the cross, uh, during the incarnation of Je Jesus Christ, and his perfect life, and his sacrificial death, he was able to destroy the power of the enemy. So the death of Jesus Christ is not a mark of defeat. It is a mark of victory. Not only that <clears throat> John would say this, uh, that the Hebrews would, author of Hebrews would say this, excuse me, uh, but also Paul told this to the Colossian believers in Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. And having spoiled the principalities and powers, he made show of them openly, triumphing over them. Galatians chapter 2 verse 15. Because of the victory, of, uh, the victory Christ accomplished on the cross, the power of Satan over the believers have been broken. Kaya ito po, he, will be, he is able to preserve us. Kasi ginawa niya na ito dun sa cross ng Calvary. This promise is fulfilled. Now we might say that the, that the evil one or the devil is looks so powerful today by the way that he is moving the world against the believers. He is just fighting a, believe, a guerrilla warfare. Tapos na ang laban. The outcome of the battle has already been determined. So, he will meet his final uh, end. But the moment that Christ died on the cross and paid for our sin, the devil's power over the believer has been nullified. Hindi niya na kayo, ano, hindi niya na kayo kayang dalhin sa impyerno. Wala na siyang kapangyarihan na, uh, sa inyo. And sometimes he would try to make us think na parang, ano, parang kaya pa niya kayong kunin at dalhin sa kanya. No. At the cross and, the empty, and at the empty tomb, he has no more power over us. Kaya nga, um, so he, and you will also find here that he, he not only preserves us from all evil, but he also, he shall preserve thy soul and he preserves our soul. God also preserves our soul. We remember the promise Jesus gave to those who believe in him. Actually, ang kausap niya dito, yung mga unbelievers. In, uh, sinabi niya ito na hindi kayo ito. Ang mga tunay na mananampalataya, ang aking mga tupa ay may ganito lang na reassurance. He said to them, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I gave unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand, of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So remember this, that you are doubly preserved. You are in the hands of Jesus Christ, by which no power on heaven and on earth could Take you away from him, and you are also in the hand of the heavenly Father, and no man is able to take you from both hands, and you are also sealed by the Holy Spirit. You are preserved by the triune God. So he shall preserve thy soul. What else? He, the Lord also, not also only preserve us from all evil, but he preserves our soul, but he also preserves us comprehensively. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. So these are two bookends. Uh, going out, coming in, and everything in between. So you understand what bookends mean. Okay, so pag may ano ka, mayroon kang shelf, maglalagay ka doon ng book, tapos maglalagay ka ng bookend. These are two bookends of activities. Going in and coming out and everything in between. So naalala nyo na yung parang advertisement doon sa device. Sabi niya, uh, for Outdoor and indoor use only. Bakit? Meron pa bang iba? Meron pa bang underwater? <laughs> Pero uh, it means comprehensive yun. Na pwede mong gamitin kahit saan. So ganun po ang Panginoon. Ang kanyang pag-iingat sa atin ay all-encompassing. Uh, he shall preserve by going in and by coming out. So, but not only that, He preserves us forever. So this is what the Word of God says, from this time forth and forevermore. 
He preserves us forever. What a great comfort to those, to those who know God that His preservation is not sporadic, but eternal. Because God, because God has promised this, let us always look up to Him as we face the challenges and dangers and toils and snares that lay ahead of us in the year 2021. Because we have a greater God who is our helper, who is our keeper, and who is also our preserver. So, what are the applications that we can learn from this? Number one is this. Because the Lord is our omnipotent helper, lift, uh, let us lift up our eyes unto Him. Hindi ba yun ang opening words ng Psalm na, na yun? Na ito, sabi doon, I will lift up my eyes unto the, he, unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heaven and the earth. Kaya, let us lift our eyes in prayer to Him whenever we are faced with circumstances that are way beyond our abilities, way beyond our capacities to deal with. What else? Because the Lord is our faithful keeper, let us always trust in Him. So, again, six times our next section from verses, verses uh, 3 hanggang uh, 3 hanggang 6 nakasulat doon ang ang promise that He will keep us. That no matter what circumstances, the sun shall not smite day by day, nor the moon by night, and all other difficulties that we may face. So let us trust Him. Magtiwala tayo sa Kanya. Ipagkaloob natin at wag, wag na tayong mag, mag-worry too much. Now there are, uh, don't worry, not only worry too much, but don't worry because we have a God who takes care of us, who gives us the strength to deal with the situation. It doesn't mean that when we put our trust, that we entrust everything to Him, that we will not deal with those problems anymore. But we trust on God for everyday strength, strength that He provides us. And because the Lord is our preserver, let us be courageous through Him. Huwag tayong matakot kung anong ga- ang gagawin natin. So, Sometimes, it seems to be na karamihan ng mga tao na, na natatakot mag-gather together with the believers na they are no longer concerned so much for their safety. But they fear too much, they worry too much, and probably worse, maring they do not love the Lord too much. Maybe the Lord is not precious to them. I am not here to say judge, but I am here just to uh, for us to evaluate our motives or our our intention, why sometimes we do not want to fellowship with the Lord. If you have been given the opportunity to worship with uh, to worship together, and there is no restriction, why not come and join us in in our corporate worship? Kailangan po yan. It is essential. It is not optional. Now, for you who are not yet saved, the Lord is not your helper. The Lord is not your keeper. The Lord is not your preserver. But His promise of salvation extends so that anyone who would hear, who would say that you are a sinner, that you are, the one, you are in need of salvation, you have to remember that it is only God through Christ that you will be saved. God sent His only begotten Son so that you would have salvation. Our Lord Jesus Christ suffered death on the cross so that you and I would be saved. There is no other way by which we cannot be saved. The Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is one name given among men by which we would be saved. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Wala na pong ibang paraan. Wag ka na magtitiwala. Kung ilalagay mo ang iyong mga mata sa ibang uh, objects ng pagtitiwala para sa iyong kaligtasan, hindi ka po maliligtas. It's not Jesus plus the church. It not, it's not Jesus plus Mary. It's not Jesus from any of the apostles. It's not Jesus plus the pastor. It's only by Jesus Christ. So, it's Him whom you should uh, put your trust in. Shall we all um, stand up as we close? I do not know about your situation tonight.
The message here is very clear that our help comes from the Lord alone and no one else. And if the Lord has spoken to your heart, has spoken to you, the message is very, if these words have been clear to you, and you want to respond in faith to what he offers, to the life that he offers to you, why not come to him? And in your, in, if in your heart, You have many worries. You have many concerns. Perhaps the situation are way beyond your capacity that you would say, I do not have the strength to deal with this one. I do not have the capacity. I, I don't see how God could even work in these tang um, tangled circumstances of, of my life. If God is our helper, if he is the one who created the heaven and the earth, heaven and the earth, your problem is not too big for him. And perhaps you are worried. Would I have the enough faith or faithfulness to be able to keep up with my spiritual life? Stop focusing on your own capacity. Stop, start focusing on the Lord because He is the one who will keep you. And He's the one who will preserve you, preserve you comprehensively. Not only in this time, but also forevermore. So, if the Lord has spoken to you about trusting in Him as your Savior, why not come? If you are listening online, I would invite you to receive him in your heart. Acknowledge of your own sinfulness before God. Acknowledge that you cannot do anything with your own strength to be able to save yourself. Put your faith in him and in him alone. Repent of your sins and trust him for your Savior. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truths that we have learned from your word. We thank you that you are God who is more than able to deal with our problems, for you are the one who created the heavens and the earth. And there is nothing, Lord, that you can't do. So our problems that we face, Lord, help us to entrust them to you. Help us to trust you more. Help us to live. Help us to be courageous because from you comes the help, from you comes our preservation, from you come, um, comes our only security. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you, Brother Dennis, for sharing God's word to us. So we have been instructed today, we have been blessed by the Lord and instructed that we continue to trust in Him. Because he is our helper, our preserver, and uh, we, we, no matter what will uh, be, what the case we're going to face this 221, we we'll continue to trust in God. Okay, for a child of God, we have a bright future. Amen? Amen. So we'd like to call past, uh, Missionary Min to dismiss us in prayer, please. So don't forget, be back this coming day, uh, this coming Wednesday, as we have our mission. Uh, midweek service and also our, our candlelight service and our anniversary on the 10th and on the 17th. Thank you. Okay, let's just pray. Father, truly you are our helper. Uh, without your help, Lord, you know that we cannot have anything. We will fail and we will be uh, fall as well. Lord, I pray that you continue to help us this new year coming that we do know that many, many challenges would come. But I believe, Lord, with your help, we can overcome every trials that may appear. Father, I also I continue to pray for everyone here that you may bless them because they are faithful for the very first day of the year. May you continue to bless them for the whole year as well. And uh, thank you for everything, Lord. 
truly we love you and we need you for our life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.